I don't know if it's safe to ride in the golf cart with, with Fred. That's wrong. started doing my Q&A, it was just a backdrop and me standing there with papers going, you know, this is going to be a quick way to get the information out to everybody instead of answering every individual little question okay. through email. A lot of these questions are redundant. Why not do a YouTube Q&A and why not do it on Fridays because that seemed to be my available day. And you're at, you're at, what, 100 and, what are you at, 180, 181? I think we just hit... I don't know, 179. I always have to look at it to see. I thought you were at 180. I could be. I don't. Mm -hmm. Brian, I don't know. You know, I just I yeah. look at my chart to see what I'm doing today. <laughs> Are we talking? Is this part of it? I this, well, it it, it might can be. it might be. You it can use can anything be. you want, so cut it up it, any way you want. It, it can. I can cut it to how you do anything. So okay. I can pick out key words and make up sentences that you'll say. Oh good, okay then. Yeah, we're at that you know, level now. Like it okay. will say Yeah. You know, in the intro here you'll be saying Castle Hives is the best. Castle Hives, no comparison. <laughs> I mean, we pretty much know it's ubiquitous throughout beekeeping. I would say throughout the hemisphere, if not the world, Brian. Wow. Castle hives. It's not pup tent hives, it's a castle. It's a castle. Top of the hill, right. dominating position. The castle. Yeah, yes. the common folk look up to it. That's the That's way right. it is. The yeah. common folk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, everybody, we are sitting here with none other than Frederick Dunn. I think everybody knows Fred um, <laughs> across the world. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I saw you for this, the first time that we're meeting. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Other than Hive Life. At Hive Life, yeah. I saw you in the distance. Okay. And I, th I think, I think we, we connected our eyes. We saw each other. Yeah, I'm sure we did. And yeah. you said, I heard you whisper and say, we need to go the other direction. There's that, there's that Brian. I did. I, have, I had concerns about the bear hugs that you give. Yes. I mean, I didn't yes. know if I was prepared for it. I tried exactly. to put people between us, just human shields. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to find out, you know, the nitty gritty about Frederick Dunn. You're going to dig deep on a shallow person. That's, that's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. And that's I, you know, I'm, I'm, this product placement. Yes, know. Nature's Image Farms. Nature's Be the lighthouse, Farm. Brian. Be the lighthouse. Be the lighthouse. So, are we can, plugging products right now? We might be. You know whose gloves are sitting right there? Whose gloves are sitting over there, Brian? Those gloves over there are from Guardian Be Apparel. I love Guardian Bee Apparel. I'd like to plug them, too, while we're plugging stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nature's Image oh Farms, that's good. So, yeah, hello to yeah. Greg. This, yes, yeah. hello, Greg. Be the Lighthouse. Good friend. Yes. I've asked this question to, I think, everybody that I've spoken to so uh -oh. far. And just a few people so far. Okay. But it's just going to keep going. Okay. And we have this Zoom squad now. We're getting the same question? Well, I have to ask this one. Okay. And who's the Zoom Squad? If the Zoom Squad... I'm just saying it. I know who they are, but I just right. want them all well, to be named because Bruce has been left out. Bruce so has I'm been left out. I, about I don't have any product <laughs> placement for Bruce. Okay. You know, you know how you know people that root for this certain football team and they say roll or red tide or something like that? Something about rolling tide. I thought that's the when your clothes are dirty. Tide. You put it in the tide wash. And it, what? Yeah, it rolls it, it rolls in it. the agitator. Okay, yeah, I got it. He roots for them. Okay. He doesn't give stuff out to people to plug on videos. So Really? If there is one memory that stands out in your beekeeping journey, mm -hmm. what would that one memory be? 
like that meaningful memory. Just one meaningful memory? Well, if there's one, what's like the top? Now, if you want to offer up two or three or however many, I mean, because it's not every day that I'm going to sit here, you know, one talking memory to you. That stands out. What is one memory? That's that really stands hard. Out? I don't have a single memory. I, I would tell you that the most prominent uh, memory about my interaction with honeybees uh, is a profound failure, and it showed my profound ignorance about honeybees. What is so I'll that? explain this a little bit. So this okay. is how I got calibrated and I realized that I knew nothing about honeybees. I'm a photographer, so I was taking portraits. So I was taking portraits in a really, really old farmhouse. Cracked plaster, all these great windows, all this, you know, just artistically, lighting and everything else, this was incredible. Then we get over to one of the windows, and wouldn't you know it, underneath the windowsill, what's coming up? Honeybees. So the owner of the place, who gave me permission to take pictures, Sarah goes, yeah, there's bees in the wall. You want to keep bees? Of course I want to keep bees. Who doesn't want to keep bees? So this guy goes back to his farm. He brings me a beehive, bottom board, all the stuff. And so what do I do? Well, I need bees. So I took a stick and I agitated the bees and I pulled them out of that hole. And I <laughs> shook the bees off and I collected probably a huge amount of bees, like more than 70. And uh, brought them home, started my beekeeping, uh, set them out by the corner of my yard. <laughs> and Look how they've grown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Today, yeah, but that was memorable because it showed, I knew, I was clueless about bees. It's, that's a bee memory because it was a wake-up call when I realized, well, there's a whole organization to it. Mm -hmm. There's a queen, which I didn't have. You know, these they have no prayer of surviving. <laughs> The other part of that is you mentioned the flow hive and that got you interested. There's a huge pushback against the flow hive. It came out in 2015. I was one of the, I supported their Indiegogo campaign. So I bought one of the early ones. I spent a oh, pile nice. of money. So uh, a lot of people associated me beyond that point with flow hive exclusively to the point where if I walked up to give a talk about bees, the arms would get crossed. The attitudes would rise, and out the door they'd go. And that's a flow hive guy. <laughs> and I thought, are you serious? I didn't get a flow hive till 2015. I've been keeping bees since 2006. That's my wife's favorite right. method for collecting honey. A lot of people don't realize, too, because I also did a paper on the flow hive, too. Hmm. And uh, so we looked into the quality of the honey that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. When you take honey out of a flow hive, you don't smoke it. Because you're taking it out of the back, you're not smoking the bees, you're not taking anything mm -hmm. apart. Uh, you're not stressing the bees, they don't even know that you're back there. So if you've mm -hmm. taken flow honey yeah. from yours, um, then the bees don't know, they're not distressed. Because mm -hmm. when you smoke a hive, you put them in suspension. Their production stops, mm -hmm. and they're preparing for a fire to blow over. Mm -hmm. So all of those things are missing, but it got me into honey quality investigations. What are the most frequently found particulates in honey that you take off of your beehive. It comes from the smoke, there's soot in there, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of particulates actually come from the honey processing. So if people have lint on their honey jackets, now we know beekeepers, their bee suits are perfectly clean all the time. I clean mine. But <laughs> they roll tied, they roll it in tight. They roll so, it. <laughs> so. <laughs> but, um, no, the thing was, uh, then they hired, I don't know if they hired or they found a bunch of honey sommeliers. They got them all together and they flavor tested all these honeys. And the flow hive honey, these are blind tests mm -hmm. and they don't know that it's a flow hive. Mm -hmm. But they uh, were picked number one by all of these because of something called mouthfeel, mm -hmm. floral, you know, all, the, all these things coming together, the scent, the taste, the feel in your mouth and all of this oh, other stuff. So one of the... Um, benefits, especially mm -hmm. in spring. In fall, it kind of all is about the same, because we have goldenrod and we have mm -hmm. asters and stuff. But in the spring, we have a lot of transitional nectar mm -hmm. flows. So you get to see the differences frame yeah. by frame. So I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah. drawing it off, one frame that's fully capped yields about a half a gallon yeah. of honey. So, and it is distinctively different. Yeah. We've lined them up on the we, table. I, yeah. I was just at this place here, I was down at yeah. Greg's recently for a learning yard, <clears throat> and that was we harvested from the Flow Super that day. But it was it was interesting because we.
bottled each frame separately. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll show you a picture. I think I have a picture on my phone. The difference in color and sure. taste yeah. was amazing. After you extract that honey, yeah. and you walk inside, mm -hmm. and you're going to watch a movie. Mm -hmm. What movie is that going to be? Well, it depends right now. It's the super scary movies. It's different it, different times of year. Are we talking... Is it always super scary? Well, this time of year, I, I like serious scary movies. I don't want it to be... I don't like slapstick. I don't like funny so, scary. I like... So... What, like Annabelle? I've never seen that. Okay, you shouldn't. I like... Uh, I still like The Exorcist. It's a classic. Okay. Uh, and there's a tie-in to that because that goes back to an actual exorcism that it was based on. But they actually brought in the priest that was the advisor. Really? Uh, from that, for the actual exorcism and how they kind of manipulated him when they made the movie. So I like movies that have spiritual impact, leave okay. you questioning things. Um, I want to be scared, but not like loud music, gore, scary. Right. I think there are other things going on. So that's Halloween time of year. So yeah, yeah. I like now, different movies of different genres for different reasons. I have a degree in cinema. So as a cinematographer, we had a lot of required films to watch. Okay. And it gave us a lot of information that I had never thought about, the, the sound quality. Mm -hmm. So like a number one film in sound, you know, Never Cry Wolf. Okay. You ever heard of it? No. So this guy goes to prove that the caribou are not being weakened by wolves or that a wolf is surviving on caribou. He gets dropped off in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You never heard of it? Yeah. Anyway, he got an award for sound. Okay. So if you're studying sound, you watch a film like that mm -hmm. because like, he lights his pipe and you can hear the tobacco ignite. All you right. Can... <laughs> so you don't like scaring people. I, uh, I really, I don't. I don't Yeah. I'm a kind Some of people person. do, some people don't. Yeah. Oh, you think it's unkind to scare people? I see it as a generosity on my part. I created a memory, I created yeah. a moment. They will have you lift forever. them up, you bring them back. <laughs> I, I get a lot of hate on social media because I like scaring my wife. Oh, okay. But I do it just by being silent. I mean, I'm not, it, she just finds me in places she doesn't expect to find me. Be somewhere where they don't expect you to be, go out of character, and just stand there. Just be there. Opens yeah. up a door. Yeah, and get some. Yeah. And be at a different height than they expect you to be at. Crouch down. Sit in the corner. What, uh, what's your favorite book? Favorite book? Oh my gosh, again. Beekeeping got a related. Oh, it has to be bee related. Or not. Well, everybody loves the honeybee democracy. Yeah. It's good. The book. biology of the honeybee. We have honeybee anatomy. Mm -hmm. Very expensive books, by the way. All the anatomy books cost mm -hmm. big bucks. And I have to say, the ABC and XYZ of beekeeping, like 1891 edition. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have, I have that book. Hey. And uh, I like it because we think we're coming up with new stuff all the time. We're configuring. I put these hive visors on my hives because it just makes sense. There they are, in a schematic, you know, over 100 years ago. Wow. I've been thinking about doing the master beekeeper. Yeah, you should. Are you? Am I doing it? I am a master beekeeper. That's yeah. what I was... Yeah. yeah. What mm -hmm. uh, What led you to pursue that path in beekeeping? Okay, this is going to be a letdown. First of all, so at anything you do, uh, if you really want to be good at it, you try to check all the boxes, mm -hmm. right? So if I was going to be a photographer, I, I wanted to go to photography school, so I did. If I was going to do cinematic work, I needed to go to cinema school, and I did. Mm -hmm. So then I would, had been doing beekeeping for a long time, and uh, I'm a recent master beekeeper. Like, I graduated, I got certified in 2021, so that's brand wow. new. Yeah. So as far as uh, beekeeping experience, I've been doing it for a really long time, and one of the things that used to happen to me when I'd be giving a presentation... Someone would say, well, so-and-so says that's not right, and she's a master beekeeper. Okay, I mean, we have to consider what they're saying apart from the title. So, first of all, let's go there. So that led me to look into, what is a master beekeeper? I don't know, so I looked that up, and then I find out that the first master beekeeping program in the United States was at Cornell University. Mm -hmm. So who's there? Dr. Thomas Seeley is there. 
we know uh, Dr. David Pack, who spoke at Hive Life last yeah. year. And he's mentioned, by the way, in Dr. Seeley's books. Oh, wow. So when he says, David did this, my grad student did that, he's talking about Dr. Peck. So the list, and then we've got another superstar, which is Dr. Sammy, right? Dr. Samuel Ramsey. Yeah. He's like it when it comes to Verota structure mites, and he yeah. just got a top position at a professor, as a professor, I want to say Colorado uh, Boulder. So that's where he nice. is right now. Wow. These are all Cornell guys. Nice. So I thought, yeah, I want to go to Cornell, the Dice Lab. That's where I want to go because it would be a challenging curriculum. Mm. Um, it would fill in the gaps. In other words, I want to make sure if I'm teaching people about beekeeping that I'm not missing something. So we all have weaknesses in bee, bee knowledge. Right. So if you want to really be a teacher. So I'd like to kind of clear the air a little about what is a master beekeeper? If you're in the Navy, we have masters, right? Mm -hmm. We have master chiefs, mm -hmm. okay? And we've got master divers. So you meet the master diver, well, he's pretty much he needs to know how to do everything to keep the rest of us safe. He's mm -hmm. going to be a, a saturation diver. He's, you know, like my first master diver was a living legend who did, mm -hmm. you know, experimental dive unit guys, wow. so the EDU in Florida. So a master diver also may not have done everything, but we need somebody in charge, and it is there are qualifications to get you there, right? Mm. So I thought maybe I need to know more about, I don't know, grafting. Maybe I need to know mm. more about genetics. Maybe I need to understand the microbiome of the bee or the anatomy of the bee in some greater detail. If we're teaching ourselves, um, mm. we won't necessarily hit all those growth and development mm. and knowledge points. Yeah. So the other thing is, I want it to be hard. I want the curriculum challenging, because if it's too easy, I don't feel like I did anything, you know? True. So when you find out, like also, I have a background in engineering analysis. You had a minimum passing score of 80. Mm -hmm. And so there weren't a lot of people in the program, so there's a cut there. Mm -hmm. And uh, But the numbers are a little skewed. When I learned that Cornell starts with about 150 candidates in the year, and they end up with maybe 29 wow. that finish the program. But I also find out they're not just cut because they were incapable. A lot of them just give up along the way. Okay. Because what's not understood uh, by a lot of people when they undergo a master beekeeping program is it's really set up to create a teacher. Just so people understand, um, when you pursue it, when you become a master beekeeper, you're supposed to be a resource. It just clicked in my head. Yeah. My normal three people that watch, <laughs> just, because we have you, yeah. I will never We might go four. five. We might go five. five? If... Uh, you walk out into your apiary, yeah, and you can go through and inspect your colonies with any one person, alive or dead. Who would that be? Oh, it's an easy one. My grandmother. I have a grandmother. My family comes from Vermont, and so I come okay. from three generations of Vermont dairy farmers. Oh, wow. Uh, so we're from the Northeast Kingdom, it's called, mm -hmm. and that's Craftsbury, Vermont. Uh... My grandmother was a beekeeper in Chester, Vermont. Oh, wow. And uh, so I was, you know, like a lot of little kids. You know, I was going through the barn, mm -hmm. I'm going through all the stuff, and I walk into this room, and it's got like a bee suit, bee gloves, all that stuff is in there, right with the tack and everything. Mm -hmm. And I took her bee gloves because I wanted to catch snakes, and I didn't want to get bit on the hands. But uh, anyway, so that led me, so my grandmother... She was into it, and my grandfather was stung so many times that he actually developed a sensitivity, oh, wow. and she had to stop beekeeping. Yeah. But uh, So I never, there's no overlap, I never got to use her as a mentor, um, so I think it would be great to, yeah. to talk to my grandmother and, and find out about her experiences right. and take her through it. So you said, Dad, or alive, I would resurrect my grandmother. And there you go. She put me to shame many, many times on many fronts. And <laughs> she was, my, yeah. my grandfather was a beekeeper. Yeah. Um, and my hives are there at his property. Oh, cool. It's, it's where okay. my mom lives, and that's yeah. where, that's where nine of my 11 hives are, are there. So that's yeah, it's kind of that connection. 
you know. Yeah, there's a book that kind of follows it. It's called The Honey Bus. And it's a little girl growing up in California, and her grandfather uh, kept bees on an old school bus. That was his processing oh. system, was this old park school bus. But that's the whole thing, is his influence on her as a child and growing up, and then wanting to continue that in his memory. What, uh, for your hives that you have here, yeah, and you don't have to name any. You know, I know there's some that they they Number have a product right. name. Oh, okay. Uh, Number forty. What's your <laughs> What's your favorite style hive to work? To work, okay, that's easy. Any of the oh, the the long lang straw by far. Uh, it's like a table. You know, you open yeah. it up. If you're taking photos, if you're teaching somebody about bees. Specifically, how to find different, you know, parts mm -hmm. of the hive, what is what to expect at a time. Mm -hmm. You can look above average when you tell people. Then when we get here, we're going to find brood. Put your hand over this and feel the warmth. Mm -hmm. Feel how cool it is over here. That's going to be honey. Yeah. So it's very interesting in a long Langstroth configuration because I set up a table. Everything is, you know, above waist height. There's no lifting. Uh, we're sliding frames back, and then I have a rack to display the frame of bees on which is directly over the horizontal hive. So if oh, anything nice. fell off, if your queen disappeared, she would go back down into the hive. Mm -hmm. So as a teaching tool, long lang straw, top of the chart, easy. And uh, it's, yeah, it's just so convenient. And oh, yeah. there's, there's not enough uh, room for them. They're expanding too fast in spring. Well, let's go to the other side of the divider board, pull some frames, put them right in. We didn't have to run to the cart. We didn't have to go to the garage, get another right. box super it, we don't have to lift anything. Mm -hmm. And likewise, at the end of the year, like now, we're all packed down for winter here, but uh, when you go through the horizontal hives, we look at how many frames of honey they have, and you bring a hive butler tote. Uh, because to me, I was late to the game with the hive butlers, you know, so, but I have those now, and I keep them on the back of my golf cart, solar powered, so. <laughs> Everything's solar powered because my house is solar powered, so I plug it in to charge it, therefore the golf cart is Okay. Okay. All right. Um, but then I can have the high butler tote right there because this time of year, robbing is crazy. Yeah. So we'll pull the frames that we want, and I'm looking at cut comb right now. So that's oh, the okay. next thing, the end of this week. And then we're done. So I'll be pulling cut comb for my foundationless frames in the horizontal hives. We also have two lands hives. And the reason I don't say the lands is my favorite is because the frames are so big, mm -hmm. so bulky, and the configuration of the hive is not suited to hanging a frame right there. Okay. So um, the long lang is just the most convenient for the beekeeper, and uh, they seem to be doing equally well as far as productivity mm -hmm. activity. Like we were outside today, and they're just yeah. flying. He's off, He ran off camera. He run. ran off camera. I'm just walking. I've had enough. And they can go over the backs of their frames and under your cover boards, but the key is to have insulation on top of that so that that heat capsule exists. Do you have a single entrance? Mm -hmm. No venting? No. Okay. So now they have the opportunity for a heat capsule to exist. So if it hits 50 degrees outside, it's going to be in the 60s in there, which means mm -hmm. now they can migrate. Ricky Rourke. Ricky Rourke. Well, they're on my porch right here. Okay. Did you see them? I'll have to look at them. You see that? I see that. That's my design, which we won't talk about, but you're going to see it in January. I don't see anything. You're going to see something. Okay. From horizontal bees in January huh. that Ricky and I came up with. So, okay. yeah. All right. We're allowed to plug Ricky. Yeah, I. You know, I. <laughs> Ricky's. Yeah, Ricky and his wife are great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you going to use the products that, are you going to have no. that competition? No. Here's what happened. <laughs> when he sent me my, those are supposed to be um, swarm traps. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, they're just too good looking. I'm sorry. His wife spent weeks painting yeah. the cherry blossoms on them. She did my logo. So long story short, they're coffee tables. Yeah. Ten good ones. I will add more to this building. We have three um, observation hives in here. Yeah. And we're going to add two more because this is an educational building. So small groups, up to ten people. We bring them in here. And we don't have to plan around weather. Mm -hmm. We have lighting. We have special spectrum lighting in those wands over there. Oh, and wow. so this is a teaching space. And uh, we'll add two more hives.
Yeah. Well, do you want to look at? Uh, I have to show at least one of your hives. What? We don't want to open it. We're showing three of them right now. I just want to, you know. <laughs> yeah, we could take a walk around. Yeah. You want to look at them? You want to take a walk? We could take a walk. Let's take a walk. Let's take a walk. Okay, let's take a walk. Let's take a walk. <laughs> it's 150 pounds um, empty. So that's kind of the beauty what of are, it. What are we looking at? We're looking at a long Langstroth hive. Pay no attention to the fact that it looks like a coffin. It is not a bee killer. And, uh, but yeah, it's made out of heavy two by stock. It's all glued up. Um, if we open it, we got, we got some free flying bees through the yeah. top there, but, um, I think this will be the third winter. Oh, wow. And then, oh yeah, you're going to want to see this though. But I'll... yeah, for, for education purposes, you can see my fancy work here. I'm obviously a detail man. And then we come over here to the layers hives. I've never seen one of these. These are, oh yeah, and look at the artwork on the back. We brought in an artist just to do this oh landscape gosh. and we put hives on the hive. And, uh, wow. Yeah, liquid text. And then so on the front of the hive though, this is house paint. <laughs> so I'm just going to see which one weathers more. And this colony is just gangbusters. Wow. We were lucky to get some late season matings done. And this is a late season uh, split that we did. Oh, wow. So they requeened, and you notice that the porch is around the center. Mm -hmm. So when we get into spring, they will have migrated through their honey stores. And then so we'll close the one on the end, and then spring will start with the entrance in the middle. And then they'll work oh, their okay. way back east. Because that's the warm side they like to work. You're, you're like a thinker. I've, I've been known to think once or twice. Right, right. Don't ask my mom, but you know, <laughs> she still thinks I'm a dullard. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and this is my field. That's all the forage that we talk about. Oh, wow. So cosmos, goldenrod. These are just standard langs. They're all buttoned up for winter. They all have yeah. hive alive on them. Um, oh yeah, we've got hive gates. On this one, we have double hive gates. Oh, okay. And they all face uh, south, so they get that winter warmth. So if we look at, this is the one that we oh swapped everything out. But look at all the bees trying to get through the top there, because these are vented through the top and you can't close the vent. So they're trying to get up there. Yeah. It looks like they might be trying to rob it. What are we going to do about this? So I am going to slide this over and reduce them to one hole. Now we'll see what happens, people. And then you've got the nucleus resource hives. Look how strong they are. They've never been fed. We wow. don't do anything for them. They have standard uh, migratory covers. And then we have this R10 insulation cap on it. See, this is hyssop. Okay. It's even still blooming now. So it's wow. cold hardy. And these are different types. So we have black adder and then so the letter lavender and see we still have a bumblebee on it. Okay. Honeybee shows up right on cue. You did that. Now they don't get pollen. They get, oh, look at all the color you could get if you shot the reflections on the pond. See. Now let's go to another patch. That's Walmart. Oh, nice property here. Walmart stock. Oh but yeah. <laughs> my nephew was at Walmart and he goes, Uncle Fred. I think there's koi at Walmart. I said, yeah, I don't think so. Send me a picture. <laughs> Choose me a picture. I said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Are you familiar with the mint family? Yes. Okay. So you know that feel on the stock, they'll be square. Now tear these up and smell them. But I really want the stuff that carries us through the broadest uh, mm -hmm. time frame, but we also want some diversity for the bees. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a great environment for them. Wow. There's even, see, you have... Cat tail. No, you have ducks in there. Just they're posing. Yeah, yeah, they just landed. Yeah, they're they're. Now here's a funny story. The company that sent me these ducks because they had to photograph them and everything uh -huh. for them, and it's obviously a decoy company. As soon as I brought them out and put them on the pond for the photography, mm. real wood ducks showed up, and hooded mergansers like within an hour. So I showed them photos with real ducks. Huge bonus. It wasn't anything they asked for. It just made me look like I went the extra yard and uh, I couldn't believe That's it. That's awesome. And this year we had a, a wood duck with like, I don't know, 
14 or 15 babies behind it. Really? And one of them was not the same as the others. This one little red-headed duck was in the middle with them. And that was a merganser in with the wood ducks. And oh, so wow. they'll lay their eggs in each other's nests as insurance. Wood ducks will do it oh. in the merganser nest. And then when they hatch out, they just keep up with them. They just go right along with them. Oh my gosh. It was really fun. Thank you.